Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and so the new Unhitam Sword actually just got released today, and let's talk about how useful this absolute monster of a sword is. In my opinion, I really love this weapon, and it's probably one of the best weapons in the game right now, and probably the best sword above Primordial Jade Cutter. We'll be talking in this video about all these characters on this list, but let's first talk about three main reasons why this sword is so great, in a very broad big picture, for those of you who are interested more in the TLDR. The first thing that makes this sword really good is the 88% crit damage. Being crit damage means that users like Ayaka or Kaya as well or other perhaps Blizzard Strayer users that will be released in future can always use this weapon and not over cap on crit rate. As you know, Blizzard Strayer already gives a large amount of crit rate and as well as Cryo Resonance will probably push that beyond the 100% boundary which makes it inefficient for your builds by over capping crit. The low base attack of this sword is very easily circumvented with characters for example like Bennett, Sarah or even the numerous amounts of attack buffing items like for example Noblesse, Tenacity, Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer and blah blah blah. The list really goes on so many attack buffers now that the low base attack doesn't really make or break a weapon anymore. And second reason why this sword is so great is actually just that 4% crit rate substat in the weapon. What this means, it actually breaks the usual ratio of weapons. For example, if we take a look at the weapons here, most weapons tend to follow a base attack and a corresponding crit damage. So the 674 gives you a 44% crit damage or a 22% crit rate in that kind of ratio. And a low base attack of 542 gives you a 44% crit rate, which is the 88% equivalent crit damage. So what this weapon actually does, it breaks this normal base attack to crit ratio on 5 star weapons and it pushes it beyond. The only other weapon currently in the game that does this is the Skyward Heart with a similar crit damage in the substat, making it the only the second weapon to have a higher crit to base attack ratio, the first of course being the Skyward Heart. And the third reason why is that its passive is actually easier to proc than you can imagine. Characters like Kerching, Ayaka, Ayoto all proc it very easily and C6 Bennett or Candace or Chongyun can make any sword unit proc the effect just by their infusion alone. Sure, not all units build into elemental mastery, but you will find that it's very difficult to have absolutely no EM stat in most of your team comps, and most units, even Kerching or Ayato, do benefit from some sort of EM on the side as well. And in my opinion, this sword is Primordial Jade Cutter 2.0, and it's definitely the top 3 weapons in Genshin right now. Personally, I'm prioritizing this sword over Ayato for my main account, this account right here, but I do think for most players, there might be a better time to pick it up in future when there's a rerun, especially if you want the pair weapon as well. For me, I don't have the current uh, Xiao Spear, the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, so I don't mind picking it up to do more weapon testing for you guys in future as well. And now, let's talk about specifics on each sword character, and you will see at the end of this video why this is a really OP weapon. Now let's start things off, of course, with a character that's not here because it's not released yet, which is El Hatem. El Hatem is definitely going to like his signature weapon, especially if played as a spread DPS. I would pair him personally with Sarah to buff his attack and apply Electro to prop the spread for El Hatem, or you could even run Lisa with a Thrilling Tails as an alternative to get that defense shred from Lisa's burst as well as the attack buff to circumvent the low base attack of this weapon too. For cryo characters like Ayaka as well as Kea, the crit damage substat as we mentioned earlier is extremely useful for freeze teams that usually 4 piece Blizzard Strayer over caps on crit. Primology Cutter is hardly used with freeze Ayaka if you guys know and this is the really the reason why. And the main question that you guys might be having if you own perhaps Ayaka is if you have the Mist Splitter then how much better or worse is this weapon compared to that? I'll be definitely be doing more testing to see the exact number of damage increase once the weapon goes live so you guys can stay tuned to the channel and check back in future where I do weapon testing videos for both of them. And another character that can actually use this weapon really well is Albedo. Similar to why the 3-star Harbinger of Dawn was really good on him in the early days before the event swords came about, is because of the monster crit ratio of the weapon is greatly appreciated by him and his burst does provide a huge amount of base 200EM stat 2 which the weapon benefits from. Albedo is not really bothered by the low base attack of this weapon since he mostly benefits from defense and crit stats. And as for Ayato, for those of you who don't have the Haran sword, Ayato's signature sword, Haran Gapatsu Futsu, and play Ayato mainly in a hyper carry comp with Bennett for example, this weapon, 
likely is going to be a strong contender for his second best or maybe even best depending on what team comp you're going. Any electro charge related team comps with Sarah might see tremendous value in this weapon as well since the EM is also greatly appreciated from electro charge. Aggravate Kerching is definitely another character that would love this weapon a lot, especially when paired with Sarah who makes up for the low base attack of the weapon, since Kerching actually will build into both EM and crit for an aggravate build and has self infusion to already prop the EM scaling passive of the weapon. Likely, I do think this weapon will outperform Miss Splitter for aggravate Kerching, but in general, most team comps for Kerching, generally, uh, I think Miss Splitter would see much better utility across the board. I'll be doing more testing on this, of course, once it goes live. And as for characters that are like, in terms of the amber rating in the middle of the park, where Cat could see some value but might not be the best in slot, will be characters like Sing Chiu, Bennett, as well as Jin. Now, the reason why is because Sing Chiu doesn't snapshot, and Bennett and Jean both prefer high base attacks. So weapon like the Smith Splitter will be competing very closely with uh, the, this new weapon, this new Helitum Sword, because of the high base attack which Bennett Jean does prefer much more as well as Sing Chiu because he doesn't snapshot. So, but other than this Smith Splitter, I do think that this weapon likely will be really good for them as well since after all, it is a 5 star stat and is already higher than most 4 star equivalents. And finally, as for users who might not see that much value in this weapon other than maybe for big PP showcases are units like Layla, uh, Chi Chi as well as Cookie. And to some extent maybe Traveller if you're running her more as a supportive Traveller role. And the reason why is because Favonia's Sword does much more better utility for the team, battering the team and giving energy particles to everyone. Whereas this sword is mainly more for a damage dealing unit. And Kuki and Layla just doesn't do as much damage uh, you with, with crit as a substat compared to other characters on this list. And characters like Chi Chi might prefer the Aquilia Favonia as well. And Kuki would prefer Freedom Swan for example. I think there's something that a lot of the community is missing out is that this weapon is actually hyper versatile and the main reason for that is because it doesn't require a unit to scale with HP for example Primordial Jade Cutter that uh, tends towards or a character that everyone's talking about Miss Splitter right now but forget that Miss Splitter is actually because most of the SWAT users currently in Genshin all scale with attack. This weapon is future proof in a sense that as long as the character deals damage, regardless if you scale with attack, EM, defense or HP, it benefits all of them equally as well, which is something that is very important to consider. And for those of you who want more sword comparisons like this, I did a sword tier list a while back and it goes into similar detail. Of course, I'll be doing more in-depth weapon comparisons to test on this sword versus the other swords once it goes live. And do let me know what you guys want to see uh, in detail, perhaps something that I haven't covered in this video or you really want me to test. I'll definitely be glad to help and thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.